Welcome back to another episode. For my sake, please quit cutting through the alleys in Lowtown alone at night. Nothing ever happens. I'm perfectly safe, Varric. Yes, I know. And that nothing is costing me a fortune. Varric is actually paying people to leave her alone. <laughs> what I'm going to do in this episode is just go and visit the other characters and see what they have to say. Unlike in Dragon Age Origins, they're not all just going to conveniently pile into a camp they can go talk to. You owe us, Isabella. Well, Lucky, I'll tell you what. Since the information you gave me was worth nothing, that's what I'll pay you. Me and my boys will get our money's worth, bitch. Oh, you poor sweet thing. Tell me, Lucky, is this worth dying for? Isabella, where have you been? You're new around here, aren't you? Welcome, and keep your wits about you. You're nothing but tits and arse to the men in this place, and they won't hesitate to grab at both. Speaking from experience, are we? <laughs> After a few broken fingers here and there, they got the idea. I'm Isabella. Previously, Captain Isabella. Sadly, without my ship, the title rings a bit hollow. You're Ferelden, aren't you? You have that look about you. I was in Denerim not too long ago. I even met the hero of Ferelden, if you know what I mean. You know, you might be just what I'm looking for to solve a little problem I have. Can't anyone fix their own lives around here? Must be something in the water. Someone from my past has been pestering me. I've arranged for a duel. If I win, he leaves me alone. But I don't trust him to play fair. I need someone to watch my back. Who's this person you've arranged to meet? His name is Hader. We worked together back in Antiva. He's never liked me. He's been asking about me all around Kirkwall. Thought I'd get it over with and meet him face to face. You wanted information from Lucky. What was it? I asked Lucky and his boys to track down something I lost. They failed to do it. It's nothing to worry about, and this is much more important. Why a duel? <laughs> I like jewels. It's what I do. And if I win, he'll be dead. Problem solved. What makes you think I'm right for this? You saw me talking to Lucky, didn't you? Those boys couldn't manage simple information gathering. I can't trust the riffraff in this place to do anything right. But you, you're different. I think I could manage watching your back. <laughs> I'll bet. I've arranged to meet Hader in Hightown after dark. I'll meet you there. So, I Isabella was, that's not just talk. She did, in fact, meet the hero of Ferelden back in the first game. And in the playthrough that I had, they had a sort of a four-way with uh, a few of the characters there. <laughs> so, oh, you know what, Varric's in the group. That's kind of going to screw this up a little bit. I'm going to leave. Or hold on, I can do this. You'll notice that in this series, they have a habit of sort of returning to old characters. Ones that 
don't really seem like they were really all that important in the first game that you saw that in. Then they come back and have a greater level of importance, more of like their time to shine. Isabelle is one of those characters. We also saw the character of uh, Cullen return from the first Dragon Age. So, I've been dying to know, what was going through your head when you fought that ogre? For the first few seconds, what do they feed those things? <laughs> I don't know anyone else that's even seen one. You're lucky just to be standing here. Somehow, Hawk, I imagine things won't be dull with you around. Not that I expect the deep roads to be boring, mind you constant threat of doom does tend to keep you awake anything in particular I should know about your brother to understand Bartrand you've got to understand the Dwarven Merchants Guild these are dwarves who would sell their mothers if they thought it'd get them a better share of the Lyrium market anyone who deals with them has to sleep with a knife under their pillow in my family that's Bartrand what are your plans for this trip into the deep roads Bartrand's running the show. On Draste's ass, he'd probably do that even if we weren't paying for everything. The tide we're looking for is supposed to be a week's travel from the surface. So I hope you aren't scared of the dark. We've got supplies, muscle, excavators. The plan is to carry out everything that's not nailed down. If we'll be working together, I should find out more about you. You're in luck. I'm always willing to talk about myself to beautiful women. My family came from Orzammar, Noble House Tethrus, until my father got caught fixing provings. He and our whole house got exiled. No huge loss. I was born up here. Sunshine suits me just fine. Are you a merchant? A mercenary? I'm a younger son. It's a difficult and dangerous profession. A lot of us die of boredom. Fortunately, being Bartrand's younger brother keeps me on my toes. Maker knows he lacks subtlety. I'm the one who pulls strings to keep the coterie out of our hair. Keep us just a whisker ahead of the other families. What about you? Been in any good battles? Does arguing with Bartrand count? I've spent my whole life in Kirkwall. Dangerous enough most days, but it doesn't compare to the deep roads. So, this will be... Let's just call it... An adventure, I guess. Great. Now we're adventurous. You know that guy Marlow at the bar downstairs? Don't make eye contact, whatever you do. Ha. <laughs> Alright, uh. He doesn't seem to be admitting it much, but you'll find out if you play the game enough that Varric is actually a writer. And he's responsible for, or he'll eventually be responsible for, like, chronicling the whole, uh, the whole, uh, story here. And in fact, that's what, uh, we're seeing in, um, in the beginning of the game when he's telling the, the story of this to Cassandra. But in the game Inquisition, you'll hear much more about how he... He's a writer and all that. Crap, I'm going the wrong way. I'm not sure about the other characters, but I know Meryl at least has something she'll say. We can have a conversation with her. You know, I don't really like the layouts of these cities in this game. Wish you were a little more... Like, as, as boring as it sounds, I'd like more of like a kind of a grid layout. So it is less wandering around. Here's the alienage. I think I've said that already. Elves everywhere. It's like a slum area of the slum. It's it's kind of bad here. <laughs> this city is amazing. Do you know I saw someone get mugged? Right outside. It was fascinating. 
Everything happens here all at once. How does anyone keep it all straight? Someone has jumped outside your door, and that's exciting? It must be the Alien Age greeting. Hasn't happened to me yet, though. They must not like me. It's so busy here. So many things just get... lost. Do you miss the Danish? I miss her and Pival stories. The creaking of Aravels in the breeze. The city is so busy and confusing. And the elves here are not like my clan. But I'll get used to Kirkwall in time. The Templars haven't found you, have they? I've been careful, even among the Dalish. Keepers never work magic in public. And I think the Templars don't even see me. I'm just another elf in the alienage. Are you feeling lost here, Meryl? A bit. But... I'll adjust. I'm glad you came by. I needed someone to talk to. By the Dread Wolf! Why is my house always such a mess when people are here? It's clean sometimes, I swear. Nice painting. I guess I'll go check with the other characters to see if anybody else has anything to say. She has a nice place for living... Oh, it's a pooper. <laughs> she has a nice place for living in a, an alienage. The elves don't really get to live with the rest of the world. <laughs> no, I don't think there's anything up here. I didn't even bother checking before I clicked on it. I didn't look. But I think I may have already done the little conversation piece with... How much longer do I have to wait? It's not even here. There she is. Not much room in the barracks, but there's nowhere I'd rather be. Varric, no. Well, you're the captain. Or you will be. It'll be easy. I'm not petitioning the Viscount to help you steal ownership of the Hanged Man. Steal? Madam, you wound me. I'm about to. Big changes are coming, huh? Captain of the Guard. Thank you, Wesley. That you keep his memory speaks well of him. He's not with me. I know that. Wesley's at the Maker's side, or he's not. Either way, he knows no pain. What I keep is that moment. I won't let anyone down like that again. Wesley's at the Maker's side, or he's not. What do you mean by that? Wesley believed, and if he was correct, then that's where he is. But this business of the less the Maker does, the more he's proven, I don't find it compelling. But you married a Templar. I married a man, a good one, and he's gone. I have heard the chant. It is lovely. Perhaps that's all it needs to be. You clearly miss Wesley, but that's not the issue. Of course I miss him, but he's not coming back. Pining like a child serves no one. So I remember him, but I let him rest. You're not so kind to yourself, though. No. I don't see how you can take the blame for the Darkspawn Horde. I put him to the sword myself, Hawk. Well, there is that. I know in my head that it was right. So did Wesley. But in my heart, that cut was cruel. I can't imagine the Captain of the Guard will like wandering in my shadow. It's not like this job means we're on opposite sides. The good you do? It seems rather appropriate. Besides, I'll be making the patrol schedule. And I don't intend to lead from a desk. I look forward to working with you. Guard Captain Aveline. Still strange, isn't it? 
Captain of the Guard. Thank you for helping me get here, Hawk. It's where I should be. That is a bit of an interesting perspective to take with this game. Because for the most part, you see the various characters have a sort of largely unwavering devotion to this sort of religion that they have in this world. Now, at most, you see sort of um, cultish behavior, like the the people that we killed in the first game over at the uh, in the Temple of Sacred Ashes, the ones that went and had a sort of different perspective on the entire thing. Aveline sort of has a more of an agnostic perspective on the thing. She married a Templar, and she married a guy that she was in love with, but she didn't necessarily uh, subscribe to his belief system there. Now, she doesn't outright disbelieve the whole concept. She just doesn't know for sure, and she says, well, it's either true or it is, and she doesn't know. She can't really do anything about it. She's just going to go on living sort of by his memory and all that kind of stuff. And, well, that's that's a certain... It's, it's a different kind of perspective than we've seen. Now, of course, there were the, uh, various religions that exist in this world, and obviously the people that believe that, like in the old gods or the, um, or the elves, the Dalish elves at least, living off in the woods, have their own sort of pantheon of religion, of deities and all that kind of stuff. But this is the first time... I mean, maybe... Maybe there were some examples in Origins, but it's the first time I can recall, anyway, of a character sort of having that kind of attitude towards this whole this whole uh, Chantry thing. But anyway, we've talked to three of the characters, and we're at 17 minutes, so I'm going to end the episode now. So, thanks for watching.